pay attention to the volume because we actually What's up guys, Steven Ducks here. So today we're going to talk about a bunch of plays from the coronavirus and there's a lot of tickers I've been playing. Overall about this week I made about 60,000 and uh, there's a lot of mistakes being involved in and some of the rules needs to be adjusted a little bit when you're trading into these type of big hypes. I'm going to give you all the analysis on all these individual tickers. Before I get into this video, make sure to click the like button and subscribe. Our conference are getting changed from New York to Cincinnati or in Ohio due to the coronavirus. So this is the last month for you to get the tickets and make sure to grab your chance and let's get into the video. All right, so let's get into uh, today's ticker and we have about several, a lot of tickers. Overall, since February, we have about 200 tickers and uh, including all those major leaders which is APT, AHPI, and CODX. Now let's go into these tickers and one by one. Then three of those tickers react a little bit different according to the virus news and all those press releases. And let's get into uh, APT first. So APT was the higher price stocks and they dropped much faster and harder. And also it didn't really bounce that much. And let's look at AHPI and CODX. So CODX is relatively cheaper priced. AHPI has the lowest flow compared to APT and CODX. So let's categorize them first. We want to look at the best one to short with when they're trying to shift the momentum from going long to short. You want to pick the ones that has the highest price first, second has the biggest flow. Overall, because of the hype, when there's not enough demand for a stock when they're trying to drop, higher flow, higher price stocks will help the stock to drop down faster. First is because since the price is so expensive, people cannot buy a lot of shares. Let's say I have $10,000 and I can only buy about maybe 500 shares or even lower and I can buy maybe a thousand shares on CODX and maybe a thousand shares on AHPI. So since the price are so expensive, I can buy less shares. When there's less shares and there's big flow and there's not enough demand if there's a lot of people trying to buy. And no, that doesn't make sense. Because the price is so expensive, I can buy less shares. And if there's so much supply and lower demand, the stock will likely to drop. So HPT is the one that has the lowest bounce rate, you can see it dropped from basically from 40 to uh, 12 in two days. So APT will be my priority to short when the momentum is trying to shift. Now this one will probably be my biggest size, which I made about roughly 60,000 on APT. And CODX is the other one that was playing a little bit weird. A CODX will probably be the second uh, take out one to short into and follow with HPI because HPI has the lowest flow. When there is low supply and higher demand, the stock like to bounce a lot. And you can see according to March 4th and March 5th, each morning spike can spike about 30 to 40% due to the low flow. Same thing goes to CODX. This one didn't really spike that far only spiked about 30% and 20%, but APT only spiked about 10%. You can see the different tickers on their bouncing percentages to be able to tell which one has the higher flow, which one has the higher supply. And you can use that flow, supply, and price range to pick which one is your priority, which one is your second priority, and which one is your last priority. No. And which ticker is your last ticker you wanna trade. Now, after that, let's talk about resistance. So APT resistance are majorly formed around 26 to 20 dollar ish. Now every time when you're trying to spec into that 20 to 23 it always failed. But I don't really recommend trading in the afternoon because trading in the afternoon will destroy the odds of being you know trying to short into resistance. So morning spec like this is easy to short into, morning spec like this also easy to short into. But when you're trying to short into multiple spikes and each time the stock will uh, reduce its own range. You can see the total range of APT on um, March 3rd was between 12 to 21. The range by itself on the second day reduced about half. Only range will be 20 to 15. Now today is even tighter. You can see it's only between 18 to 16. When the range gets 
tighter and tighter, it's not worth it to short anymore. So APT in the future, you kind of have to wait until you know it loses entire momentum, goes back to four or three, then shorting into all those resistance around 10. So in this case, when you're trading into this type of hype, APT is not a priority anymore for me. Now let's look at CLDX. So CLDX is a little bit different compared to APT. This one was a little bit stubborn. They held 50% gain or above and it's been consolidating there every single day. But the stock itself is also tricky. Yesterday, it went from 13 to 11. Now 11 was the last support for this ticker. And uh, this morning did a press release and gapped up the stock and squeezed the shorts but it doesn't really seem like it can break this $15 area. You can see the majority of the consolidation are always formed around 15 to 14, between 11 to 15. Now it's awkwardly stuck in between the support and resistance. It has nowhere to go. And there's high volume being camped into that area as well. So it's on CLDX, it's going to be really tough to read in the next couple of days. I think once the stock cracks 11, and uh, you can see the, you know, about, a weak chart it still has decent amount of risk reward to fall back into maybe five or four. So CLDX has the highest potential reward for shorting and APT is not. Now HPI, same thing. It's very similar to uh, APT, just a bigger uh, volatility version. Also, HPI involved higher range compared to APT. It moves more up and down compared to APT. And uh, since the coronavirus is still going, and all of those tickers kind of neutralized itself because it dropped pretty much all of its own gain. Now it's trying to consolidate. And when it starts trying to consolidate and the fundamental of the virus are still going, and uh, I think in the next couple of days, we'll do like a decent bounce, bounce back to maybe 30 to 28, but I don't think you will bounce all the way back and trying to break that the high. I don't, because you traded so much volume. Uh, this candle. It's going to be very difficult to break into that and soak all the back orders that was trapped in the 40 and 30 ish. So, overall, I think coronavirus sector is kind of dead for now. CODX probably has the highest reward for shorting. It also, has to be really careful because the stocks on SSR pretty much all the time is trying to release a PR. So, I wouldn't really recommend holding the short overnight, and this one will eventually do an offering, and in the future, it will be a potential short as well. And now let's look at IBIL. During this time in March, we had a lot of volume be trading back and forth. Make sure to pay attention to the volume and the normal volume we get is typically around 15 million to 60 million. That's like the maximum on the intraday. Now we're getting about three times as much volume compared to the last month or last year. And you can kind of tell, you know, when you are trading into the first green day, second green day, you are expecting three times volume. That means the three times of demand compared to normal. Uh, so when you're trying to short first and second green day, that's basically suicide. When there's that much demand and tiny amount of flow for something like IBIO and HPI, it's going to be very difficult to short into and it's likely to blow up your account. In this case, I wouldn't really recommend trying to short into any type of ticker until this hype is over. Then you can use them as resistance to short into the future. That's going to be much easier compared to trying to short it now. So that's pretty much all the analysis for all the coronavirus stocks. Hopefully you guys stay safe. We'll still probably have another one or two weeks of all this hype and still we have a lot of potential play incoming into the next uh, month or two. And uh, never short into first green day and do not sure into any type of hypes or maybe like a weak morning panic because there's a lot of volume volume can adjust morning panic really easy and uh, thank you very much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one